Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's EDM3369 Vlogs. Don't forget to like and share, subscribe and click the all button for updates. We have the farm, uh, Palm Sunday for the year 2023. And this year, we will talk about the triumphal entry to Jerusalem. Palm Sunday is the Christian movable feast that falls on the Sunday before Easter. The feast commemorates Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's an event mentioned in each of the four canonical Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Its name originates from the palm branches waved by the crowd to greet and honor Jesus as he entered the city. Palm Sunday marks the first day of the Holy Week. In most Christian rites, Palm Sunday is celebrated by the blessing and distribution of palm branches, representing the palm branches that the crowd scattered before Christ as he rode into Jerusalem. These palms are sometimes woven into crosses. Many churches of mainstream Christian denominations, including the Orthodox, the Catholic, Lutheran, Methodist, Anglican, Moravian, and Reformed traditions, distribute palm branches to their congregations during their Palm Sunday liturgies. Many Christians take these palms, which are often blessed by clergy, to their homes where they hang them alongside Christian art or keep them in their Bibles and daily devotional books. The triumphal entry is that of Jesus coming into Jerusalem on what we know as Palm Sunday, the Sunday before the crucifixion. The story of the triumphal entry is one of the few incidents in the life of Jesus which appears in all four Gospels accounts like in Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11, in the book of Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11, in the book of Luke chapter 19 verses 29 to 40, and in the book of John chapter 12 verses 12 to to 19. As Jesus came closer to Jerusalem, he asked two of his disciples to go ahead of him. He said, when you get to the town, you will see a donkey tied up. Untie it and bring it to me. And so they did. If anyone asks you about taking the donkey, just tell them, the Lord needs it and he will bring it back as soon as he's done with it. So the disciples did as Jesus asked. They soon found the donkey tied up at the doorway. As they were untying it, some people were standing nearby visiting. They didn't recognize the man and asked, What are you doing? Why are you untying the donkey? Uh, they replied, just as Jesus had told them to, explaining that the Lord needed it. The people then let them go. When they brought the donkey to Jesus, some of the disciples took off their coats and laid them on the donkey's back. They did this out of respect for Jesus. Then Jesus rode on the donkey towards Jerusalem. Putting the four accounts together, it becomes clear that the triumphal entry was a significant event, not only to the people of Jesus' day, but to Christians throughout history. We celebrate Palm Sunday to remember that momentous occasion. On that day, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a borrowed donkey's cult, one that had never been ridden before. The disciples spread their cloaks on the donkey for Jesus to sit on, 
and the multitudes came out to welcome him, laying before him their clothes, cloaks and the branches of palm trees. The people hailed and praised him as the king who comes in the name of the Lord. As he rode to the temple where he taught the people, healed them and drove out the money changers and merchants who had made his father's house a den of robbers. Jesus' purpose in riding into Jerusalem was to make public his claim to be the Messiah and King of Israel in fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Matthew says that the kingdom coming, that the king coming on the foal of a donkey was an exact fulfillment of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus rides into his capital city as a conquering king and is hailed by the people as such in the manner of the day. The streets of Jerusalem, the royal city, are open to him. And like a king, he ascends to his palace, not a temporal palace, but the spiritual palace that is the temple, because his is a spiritual kingdom. He receives the worship and praise of the people because only he deserves it. No longer does he tell his disciples to be quiet about him, as in Matthew chapter 12, verse 16, but to shout his praises and worship him openly. The spreading of cloaks was an act of homage for royalty, and Jesus was openly declaring to the people that he was their king and the Messiah they had been waiting for. Unfortunately, the praise of the people lavished on Jesus was not because they recognized him as their savior from sin. They welcomed him out of their desire for a messia messianic deliverer, someone who would lead them in a revolt against Rome. There were many who, though they did not believe in Christ as a savior, nevertheless hoped that perhaps he would be to them a great temporal deliverer. These are the ones who hailed him as king with their many hosannas, recognizing him as the son of David, who came in the name of the Lord. But when he failed in their expectations, when he refused to lead them in a massive revolt against the Roman occupiers, the crowds quickly turned on him. Within just a few days, their hosannas would change to cries of, Crucify him! Those who hailed him as a hero would soon reject and abandon him. The story of the triumphal entry is one of contrasts, and those contrasts contain applications to believers. It's the story of the king who came as a lowly servant on a donkey, not a prancing steed, not in royal robes, but on the clothes of the poor and humble. Jesus Christ comes not to conquer by force as earthly kings, but by love, grace, and mercy, and his own sacrifice for his people as well. He his is not a kingdom of armies and splendor, but of lowliness and servanthood. He conquers not nations, but hearts and minds. His message is one of peace with God, not of temporal peace. If Jesus has made a triumphal entry into our hearts, he reigns there in peace and love. As his followers, we exhibit those same qualities, and the world sees the true king living and reigning in triumph in us. As he was traveling, some people saw Jesus coming and came running towards him as they heard he might be coming and they wanted to see him because he had just helped a dead man come back to life. As we remember, he before going to, to Jerusalem, he went to Lazarus who died four days before. And uh, Lazarus, as we all know, is the brother of Mary and Martha. Lazarus is his uh, loved friend. That's why he wept when he saw Lazarus come out from the grave. Because as we remember, he uh, gave life back to Lazarus. And all this happened on the Saturday before 
at the, until the early dawn of his, before his triumphal entry to Jerusalem. One by one, they laid their coats in the ground for the donkey to step on. Even the people that weren't wearing coats ran to the fields and trees nearby and cut palm branches and laid them down. And this is how everything started. Why are people every year in, year out during Palm Sunday bring palm branches, have them blessed by a clergy and bring them to their homes? to commemorate or remember the triumphal entry of Christ to Jerusalem. And here, as you see, how the people cheered on him, how happy they were. But as we remember earlier, it was mentioned that uh, the people perceived him not, his, not their Savior from their sins, but someone who could help them fight Rome for them. As they got even closer to the town, more and more people noticed Jesus. A crowd surrounded him and started to shout praises to him for all the miracles he had done. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! Hosanna! These people knew that Jesus was special. It was like when a king or queen would come to town and people would roll out a red carpet for him or her to step on. This is what these people did for Jesus when they laid down their coats and branches. Old and young men and women were there to wave their branches for him, to welcome him. The word, the word Hosanna means save us. They said this because Jesus was helping them and doing amazing things. They wanted to praise him and they wanted him to keep helping them. Some men named Pharisees, these men thought they were important. A lot of the people listened to them. They heard the crowd praising God. They said to Jesus, teacher, why don't you tell these people to stop praising you? As if you were God. The Pharisees thought that Jesus was getting too much attention from the people. They wanted to be the most important, but everyone was listening to Jesus. Instead, Jesus replied, if they were quiet now, even the rocks would cry out. Even the rocks knew that he was God. After all, Jesus did make them. Now Jesus could see Jerusalem and it made him very sad and he came to help the people, but no one realized that he was God and they didn't accept him. The Gospel of Matthew states that this happened, that the prophecy might be fulfilled of Zechariah 9, 9, the coming of Zion's king. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious slowly and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It suggests that Jesus was declaring he was the king of Israel. You may read on chapter 21 of Matthew from the New Testament. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and happy Palm Sunday, everyone. Please like, comment, subscribe, EDM3369 Blacks. Bye.